church, what house we come to. I can remember when I was in the world and we would roll up to the club, Missionary Ernie, and when we heard that music, before we got in the door, we was grooving with the music. But guess what? When we went to our house party, when we heard the music, we came in a door celebrating. But when we come in the house of the Lord, we take a slow walk. As if somebody making you come. Don't do that. God has been too good. He's been too kind. And sometimes we have to teach people how to worship. So many times as worship leaders, we concentrate on being a cheerleader when we should be a worship instructor and teach people why we should pray. Why we should worship. Haven't he been good to you? Haven't he made ways for you? When you think about it, you think him about it. When you think about it, you think about it. Hallelujah. Got your word there. Give me a flat. Every worshiper, I dare you lift your hands right where you are. A familiar song of the church. Come on, open up your mouth and tell them something. Song says, Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised.
Take a moment to lift your hands. Come on, when everybody just close your eyes for a moment. Lift your hands all over this place. Come on, begin to talk to the Lord. Come on, in your own way. In your own way. Come on, in your own way. Come on. In your own way. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, he's been waiting for to hear from you all week long. Come on, your own way. In your own way. Uh-huh. Yes, 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 yes. In your own way. Come on, in your own way. Bless him. Come on, thank him for waking you up this morning. Come on, thank him, thank him. Come on, thank him. Thank him for waking you up this morning. Hallelujah. Thank him for giving you another chance. Hallelujah. Thank you because he didn't allow you to die in your mess. 
I don't know about you, but I was so up from the front to the back. But God cleaned me up. And I'm so grateful that he didn't give up on me. But I'm grateful that he gave me another opportunity to get my business right with him. And you know something? I'm far from perfect. I want you to hear that today. I'm far from perfect. Hallelujah. But yet when I enter into the house of the Lord, and I just, I just begin to think about his goodness and his kindness and how he's been good to me and how he's made ways for me. Hallelujah. How he's blessed me in spite of me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And just the mere fact that I have the opportunity to walk through the doors of the church on this morning. I owe him my praise. I said I owe him my praise. Hallelujah. I owe him my life. Hallelujah. Because my life is not my own. It belongs to God. And because it belongs to him, I'm going to offer up a sacrifice of praise. wondering what's going on, let me tell you what's going on. I'm giving you an opportunity to bless the Lord today. Yeah, yeah. I'm giving you an opportunity to bless the name of the Lord today. them from various destinations. Father, you knew what they were going through before they even walked through the doors on today. Father, I ask right now that you would touch them in a special way. Father, look upon their homes even now. Father, I release a blessing over their families right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I come against the distractions that try to hinder them from going forth in the name of Jesus. But Father, I thank you for freedom and liberality taking place in this household today. Father, I thank you, dear God, for bringing us from a mighty, mighty long way. And I'll give your name the praise today. I'll give your name the glory today. I'll give your name the honor today. Father, I ask right now that you would touch us in a more perfect and special way. Father, hide us behind the cross. Yes, Father, hide all of our issues, all of our shortcomings, all of our disappointments, all those things that keep us from walking in your perfect will. Father, thank you for keeping our mind in perfect peace, oh God. Father, we yield it all to you today. We yield it all to you today. We yield it all to you today. And we'll bless your name. And we'll give your name the glory. We'll give your name the honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Come on. Somebody put their hands together and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to get up out your seat today and go and greet two or three people. Let them know it's so good to see you. Hallelujah. It's so good to see you. Hallelujah. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. Hallelujah. It's so good to see
station amen to be blessed amen with your sunday services on today and it's our intent that you will feel the love of god from our sanctuary even into your homes on your job in the hospital room while you're driving down the street even listening to the broadcast and even those who will be watching this later on we thank you for joining us on this morning and we welcome each and every one of you to come out here at 8708 Willow Street in New Orleans, Louisiana to join us for such a great time of worship. God is doing a new thing in this house and we are so excited. Amen. When I say we are, you say prayer tower. When I say we are, you say prayer tower. When I say we are, you say prayer tower. And then we're going to end by saying 8708 strong. Y'all got that? Y'all got that? Yes. Let's try it out. We are. We are. We are. 8708 strong. Hallelujah. Now look, now when we do this, you got to get some excitement in your voice. You got, I'm telling you, you got to get, get some excitement in your voice. Because I'm telling you. People are coming to be a part of this family, and we want them to be a part of a very exciting church. No, I don't think I don't think you really understood what I'm trying to say to you. Before you get to the prayer tower, there are so many different churches you gotta pass. But the mere fact that people make the sacrifice to walk through the doors of this church. It means that God is up to something special. Sister Sam, you looking mighty good today. I see you. I see you. Hair fried, died, and slayed to the side. I see you. I see you. That's right. That's right. So let's try that again. We are. We are. We are. 8708 strong. Hallelujah. I thank God today, amen, for, amen, key members and partners of this church, amen. We miss you, Elder Donnell Russell, amen, hallelujah, amen, he was all the way in Atlanta, amen, laying the great maestro, uh, Kevin Lemons, to rest, amen, a service fit for a king. My God, my God, it's so good, amen, to have you back home. Of course, you can be anywhere on today, yeah. amen, but the mere fact that you're here with us at home, yeah. amen, it blesses my heart, and we love you so much. Amen. Can we thank God for Elder Russell? Amen. I thank God for Elder Russell, too. Amen. These sainted mothers, amen, you all look so good on today, amen, Mother Althea. Mother Fanny, amen, and Mother Taylor, amen. We got some beautiful mothers in this house. Lord have mercy. I'm serious. We bless. I'm telling you, we bless. And I thank God for my very own wife, amen, Lady Shaman Denise Burtonmore, amen. Can we thank God for my real today? You all look so good. I thank God for you. Can you thank God for yourself? We shall not be afraid. I asked Lady Moore if she would come today and give us readings. Amen. So I want her to come. Amen. Please receive our first lady.
for being here today. Hallelujah. I give God glory and I give God praise. Hallelujah. For even being able to get up and walk from that place to this one that I stand. It's been a struggle, but thank God I am still here and I'm still standing. Hallelujah. And I just want to welcome you to the greatest church on you may hear this all the time. Y'all may hear this everywhere you go. But this is the greatest church. God what direction he wants me to go in yeah. um, not a, not what I'm feeling at the time but it's it's about what he where he wants me to go at the time hallelujah and I'm not a big talker but I am uh, a singer and I use the gift that God has given me and it was just a, a, a song it's a simple simple song that God put in my heart um, to sing to the people of God on today it's very short I'm not going to be before you long, but it is a song that I believe that we need in this season in our lives. I don't know about you all, but there um, are some tough times yeah. that we have been going through. I mean, since the pandemic, it's been hit after hit after hit yeah. after hit after hit. And just when you think that you come up for a breath of air, something else comes. Hallelujah. But I am here today to tell you, hallelujah, I am who I am today because God used my mistakes. He worked it for my good like no one else ever could. I am who I am today because God used my mistakes. He worked it for my good like no one else ever
how God shows us his uh, his uh, his love and his mercy and his grace and even though you may fall and stumble he says here I am give me your hand give me your hand and when you're down in your situation and you feel like you can't make it God is saying give me your hand you don't have to carry this weight on your own give me your hand 
That's why the altar is so important. Give me your hands. That's healing for the children of God. Give me your hands. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Why struggle and keep going through what you're going through? Give me your hand. Somebody's going through right now. You don't have to wait until the end of the service. You can give me your hand right now. Hallelujah. God wants to bring healing to your mind, healing to your heart. You've been hurting. Yeah. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. You've got free will on oh, today. You've got free will. How many of you ever heard of, of the, the great preacher Erica Badu? Y'all heard of that preacher Erica Badu? She heard of him, but she's smiling right there. You heard of Erica about you. She wrote, she wrote a song, Bag Lady. You know, after the bag lady, she always carried all these bags with everything in it. And she walking, and she said, you can't carry that stuff like that. And she just was walking through life, carrying the weight. And the weight began to be so unbearable. And every time she tried to walk, the bags would slow her down. It's the weight. 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 But God is saying, put your bag down. Put your bag down. You don't have to continue to carry that bag. You can put your bag down. I'm trying to help somebody today. Put your bag down. Put your bag down. Put your bag down. You know, some people, Sister Andrew, they live their lives out of a suitcase. You, I can, I can talk to you. I get, I get stressed. Look, you ever experienced anybody that ever packed their suitcase real good and they went on the trip? And then when they went on the trip, Sister Ernie, they never unpacked their stuff, but you got all these dresses and everything in the room for you to get comfortable, but yet you keep everything right there in that suitcase. You take something off, you put it in the bag, and you put it right back in the suitcase. Everything is packed. And then when you get home, you take the same suitcase you had, and you don't really unpack the suitcase. Sometimes you just leave the suitcase right there. And if there's something in the suitcase that you need, you just go and get it out. And then you gradually take things out. But watch this. You don't have to live your life carrying your suitcase. The reason you came to church was to unpack your hidden issues. And when you pop that suitcase open, you're like, God, here I am. Here are all my issues, my failures, my disappointments, everything that I tried to hide. You can't hide nothing from God anyway. You can try, but you can't hide nothing from He sees everything.
to 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, yes, God. 2 Peter chapter 1, all the long we have been uh, dealing with a series, dealing with uh, the mind, Hallelujah. we've been dealing with our series, dealing with the mind, yes. we have been so blessed during this series, we've been seeing God do some supernatural things, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, and he has so much more in store for you. Young man with that MGM jacket, God got so much more in store for you. You are so powerful. Every, you are so powerful. You hear what I said? You are so powerful. You are a threat to the devil. And that's the reason why stuff is always coming your way. Yes, Lord. Because you are a major threat to the devil. Yes, and if you ever make up in your mind yes, that you're going to say, God, yes. here I am, messed up yes, from the flow on up. Yes, but I just ask you to step in and help me in my daily walk. Yes, when you make that decision to ask him to help in your daily walk, yes, then you're going to get a sick one. And you will not be another statistic. Hear me. God has great purpose and a great plan for your life. And everything that you've been through thus far, God's going to use it for his glory. Yeah. Yeah. And you ain't got to be afraid to step into it. I'm serious, man. The call of God is so strong on your life. Father, I thank you for this young man right now. Father, I thank you for stealing this prophetic word over his life. Father, I thank you right now for covering him from the crown of his head to the soul of his feet. Father, I thank you for the anointing that's upon his life. That anointing that destroyed you in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask right now that you would touch his mind. In the name of Jesus. Father, give him ears to hear what God said the Lord. Bless him even now, oh God. Strengthen him even now. Touch his mind even now. God got something powerful for that young man. You should be in your Bible, Second Peter, chapter one, verses one. Ooh, man. Sister, sister, lovely. And it reads, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power. Do y'all see it in your Bible? Read verse 3 with me. Has it what? Has given unto us what? Wait. According to his divine power, had, that's past it. Has given, hear this. He's already done it in the past. He's given unto us. You can put your name there. 
according to his divine power, had given unto Chris what? Y'all see it? All things. Somebody say all things. All things. That pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Yes. Look at somebody and say, I already got it. I already got it. Say it one more time. I already got it. Look at somebody else and say, I already got it. That healing that you believe in God for, yes, God. you already, already got it. Yes, You're looking for God to do a change in your life. Yes, You're looking for him to transform you. Yes, you already got, already got it. Hear me. Yes, Hear me. You're going, you going through life month after month, week after week, wondering how different bills are going to get paid. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, I already got it. You could be going through a situation right now not knowing how you're going to make it out. But you already got it. Because the Bible says according as his divine power had given. He's already done it. Unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Whatever it is you need to be successful in this life, you already got it. But you got to learn how to come in agreement with God's word to speak and declare what it is that he has said in order to receive a manifestation. Because nothing in this life is automatic. I'm going to say that again, Sister April. Nothing in this life is automatic. He has already done it, but you got to put yourself in a position to receive what he has already done. That's just like um, somebody writes a will. They say in the will, you're going to get this, 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 and this. They go to the attorney, they sign the papers, the attorney put it up. You already got what's written in the will. But now, you have to put yourself in a position in order to receive it. But the only way you receive what's in a will is after somebody transitions. That's right, that's right. Jesus was God in the flesh. Uh -huh. Hear me. Yeah. He created Adam and Eve in the garden. Uh -huh. He gave them power, authority, dominion. He told them what to do, what not to do. Yeah. Because they disobeyed him, they got kicked out. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever you are not doing what your parents tell you to do, sometimes you will get kicked out. That's right. Can we just be real here today? Yeah. There's no two kings in one castle. And when you think you are too grown on your own, that's when it's time for you to go and get your own castle so you can do what you want to do over there. So they got kicked out. They gave the keys to the kingdom to the devil. So now, God had to send Jesus into the earth to take back the keys of death and life. But because of the decisions that they made in the garden, Man was never supposed to die. That's right. I'm going to say that again. Man was never supposed to die. That's right. But because they gave the keys away, now we've been penalized yeah. to where now all of us will one day close our eyes. Yeah. So as time goes on here, Jesus comes into the earth. He comes into the earth clean. Y'all heard me say this before. He became sin so that you can go free. Yes, yes. He took everything that you was going to go through. It was already done way before you even got here. He paid the price. He paid the penalty for people who will not even serve him. But yet he said, I'm going to give you that opportunity to have an opportunity to get to my father. Yes. But in order to get to the father, you got to go through the son. So he came, he fulfilled his job, even when he didn't want to do it. Yeah, that's right. 
He said, Father, not my will, but thine will be done. He kept on saying, let this come pass for me. Do I have to go through this? And there are those of you who ask the question yourselves, do I have to go through what I'm going through right now? You see, sometimes God has to allow certain things to happen so that you can get your mind together that you are going to serve him. Because truthfully speaking, if you never go through nothing, some of you will never give your life to Christ. That's Why? Right. Because you think you got it all sold up. That's right. That's right. And the truth of the matter is, if heaven, if heaven was guaranteed to you, whether you accept him or not, you will probably be partying like a rock star. That's right. I put on, I put on, you got your bottles in there, I put on, or you get, or you get, you get, you get down with it. Yeah. You put it on because you feel like you got time. Mm -hmm. That's right. But it's appointed unto every man to die. Yes, you are going to die. Mm -hmm. As much as you don't want to think it, you're going to die. Oh, yes. Matter of fact, you're dying right now. Yes, yes, yes. That's true. Because nobody knows the day, the time, or the hour, he's going to come back. So right. watch this. If you don't die, you're going to be raptured out of here. Jesus came. He said, Father, not will, but thy will be done. He got up there on the cross. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. And he was on the cross, and his mother was at the feet of the cross. And she was looking up at her son. Behold, my son, who come to take away the sins of the world. Yeah. And she had to literally give her son to God. Yeah. And he died up on the cross, but people thought that it was over. Yeah. But it wasn't over, it was all a part of the script the whole time. Right. Why? Because innocent blood had to be shed for the remission of your sin. Yeah. That's all right. So his blood was shed. They thought it was over, they thought they got the victory. But then they say in three days, he got up with all power in his hand. But watch this, when he got up, he gave you the same power that you already had. Come on. But when he was on the cross, he said these three words. He said, it is finished. In other words, everything you was going to do, everything you was going through, everything you was going to need, it has already been finished. And so since it's already been finished, now i got to put myself in a position to receive the finished work of Christ on the cross. So man is a trap by being. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives on the inside of the body. That's why the preachers say ash and ashes. That's, that's because your shell goes back to Mother Earth. But your spirit, man, lives on forever because the real you is a spirit. So once you close your eyes on this side, you close your eyes on this side and you wake up in eternity. See, this side, you are bound by time. But in eternity, there is everlasting. There is no end to life on that side. And so, how do I get the things that God has for me? Number one, you got to speak what he is saying. Yes, 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 yes. See, many of us have been speaking what somebody else told us down through the years. My God, my God. And let me tell you something, just because they've been speaking it does not mean that it's right. That's right, that's right. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. That ain't in the Bible. It ain't, it ain't in the Bible. Even though he shows up every time, but that is not in the Bible. God said you take one step, he gonna take two. That ain't in the Bible. I give a thousand dollars to anybody right now who can show me that in the Bible. Right now on the spot. I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can show me. God said you take one step, he'll take two. It ain't in the Bible. <laughs> Keep looking because it ain't in there. <laughs> My kids can tell you, I ain't going to make a wager that I don't know nothing about. But it's not in the text. 
So we got to tell God what his word says because when we come into agreement with what he says about us and give him his word, then we get manifestation. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So if the word was with God, and it was God, when we are speaking his word, we are speaking God to our situation, and things got to change. Because God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. If he said it, it has to come to pass. My word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the purpose that I sent it out to do. He's not an Indian giver. God is not going to renege on what he promised you. People may renege, but God ain't going to renege. You know, right now, everybody loves me. Then, the moment that I do something, or say something you don't agree with, he off. I don't know where they get him from. It's time for me to go find me another church now. I'm going to find another church. But what did God tell you? He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. In other words, you can't choose me because God already did it. Ooh, ooh, I can bust somebody above my right now. Yes. Man, I love you. I'm, I'm telling you, I love you for real. But God has a plan that he wants to do to bring his word to pass in your life. Yes. But you got to open up your mouth and say something. Yes. He's not going to force himself on you. Yes. Matter of fact, if he was going to force himself on you, you would have been saved a long time ago. A long time ago. That's right. Hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit is the ultimate drawer. He's the one that draws you in. And he's pulling you in. And you're thinking on your own, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of going through this. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. And you keep saying you're tired. And then he says, all you who are weary and have a limb, come unto me and I will give you rest. He didn't say your man was going to give you rest. He said he's going to give you rest. Because your man may give you something that feels good, but what you're going to do when the feel good is over? Come on. Man, they don't want to. Come unto me. In other words, come unto God and allow him to give you rest. Well, you can rest in the promises of God. Well, every need is met with heaven's best pertaining your life. Victory belongs to you. You are not defeated, but the devil plays tricks on your mind to make you think you can't make it. He tries to make you think you will never uh, accomplish what you've been believing God for. And all this time, other people make you feel like you 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 saying you won't you won't do this and you won't do that. God God placed them desires on your heart for a reason. Yes. Because it's his good pleasure to bless you as a child of God. He said, I've called you. I've anointed you. I've appointed you. Come in, Jeremiah. Testify for me right here. Jeremiah was talking about, uh, uh, I'm only a child. I'm only a child. Nobody going to listen to me. And he said, I've already put the word in your mouth. Yes, yes. But when he put a word in your mouth, you got to speak what he says speak. My mother was my mother would say, if 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 I don't do what the Lord say, finish it later more. If I don't do what the Lord say, he gonna get me. So I'm gonna say what God said. I'm gonna tell you. You gotta be able to tell of the goodness of God. It's his good pleasure to bless you. The Bible says he had already given. Now he's going to give it to you later on. He said, I've already given it to you. Now I just need you to come in agreement with what I said. Come on. And when you come in agreement with what I said, you can get everything I have in my will. Everything. What's his will? His will is right here in the word. Yes. But if we never get the word to find out what's in it, we'll never yes. know what's for us. Right. Right. For the word is rich and sharper than any two-edged sword. This word is going to cut you. 
But a lot of people don't want to touch it because they don't want to get cut. A lot of people want to pick and choose what scriptures they're going to believe. Either you're going to believe the whole Bible or you're going to believe none of it at all. Because God knows all the number of strings on your head. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Oh, he do. Yes, he does. He do. Even though that spray paint these men put in their head. Uh -huh. <laughs> he knows because I do it too. <laughs> Go to the barber shop, get that fresh lining. He spray that black on there, then hit him with that razor. Man, I come walking out there like a big dog. <laughs> Follow me now because I'm a red hot pair of the boy. Oh! Or they, or they licking it. Cause they cut me so fire. Yes. Can I just be me? Yes. I'm, tell, I'm telling you, the people that God has assigned to this church yes. and assigned to my life, the pastor, I'm telling you, they're coming. Uh -huh. And there are those of you who are in here right now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So when I bust this thing open, I just want you to take that walk and come down the aisle, shake my hand, let me be your pastor. Yes. That's it. Because we're going to judge you where you are. We're going to love you where you need to be. That's right. Hallelujah. In other words, we ain't going to judge you for how you're looking right now. That's right. Because how you look right now is not how God sees you. That's right. He already sees better for you right now than you see for your own self. He's anointed you and appointed you before the foundations of the world. He's already called you for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But see, it matters that you be connected to the right pastor. That's right. Because when you are connected to the right pastor, the right pastor will love the hell that's in you. That's right. Because yeah. see, there are certain, certain, so many people who are fighting inner demons uh -huh. and they're looking for somebody to love that out of them. Yeah. Looking for it. That's right. The Bible says, with love and kindness, have I drawn me. You can't be nasty trying to draw people. There is no perfect church. When I became a pastor, the church was already imperfect because I'm not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I strive for perfection every day. I try to live a lifestyle that's pleasing to God. Yeah. Hear me. I try to dot every I and cross every T, but sometimes I don't get it right. Yeah. That's right. And that's okay. Why? Because I'm a work in progress. Yeah. God is not through with me. He's still shaping me and molding me. But watch this. Just because he's not through with me does not give me an excuse to sin. Because yes. sin keeps the promises of God yes. from not falling in your life the way it should. Come on, come on. But you got to say, here, I, here am I, Lord. Send me. Send me. Send me. My life don't belong to me. My life belong. My life belongs to you. Yes, Lord. You gotta, you gotta guide me. You gotta lead me. You gotta show me the way, yes. and He will guide you when you give Him permission. Yes. yes. He's talking to you all the time. He can be telling you to go left, and then you say, No, I don't want to go this way. I want to go this way, and yes. then He keeps trying to tell you, Go left, go left, go left, go left, and He's showing you that there's stuff in the in the way if you go this way, and you say, No, I want to go this way, and then. Move his hand, and then you go this way, and now you're in all kind of situations, and you're like, God, help me in this. And he's saying, I tried to tell you, but you didn't want to hear what I had to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Use them, use them. I'm trying, honey. I'm trying. I'm trying. But he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Yeah. So you live in a holy and sanctified life set apart by God, it's already there for you. It's already there. All you got to do is surrender your all. When you surrender your all, God steps in and he says, now nah, I want to take control. Y'all ever heard anybody say, oh, she dropped him. She got that steering wheel in his back. Oh, she got that steering wheel in his back. That, that means that mean somebody, somebody's getting on your nerves so bad. I'm telling you, they got, now they got you all out of character. They got you saying things you normally wouldn't say. Well, you might, you might normally say it, but now you say it on a greater level. They got you flipping the bird while you, you driving down the street in the car and somebody jumping in front of you and everything. Oh, don't talk about you trying to get a parking spot and you've been waiting. You've been waiting in that parking lot with your hazard lights on for a long time because the people getting their car, putting their brochures, and then right when they... Right when they start pulling,
find out somebody else jump in. What you doing? Yeah. 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 And then I'm, I'm being too extra for y'all. I'm good, brother. All right, all right. All right. So you feel some kind of way that somebody, somebody to jack your pumpkin spot. Y'all saw what Madea did on the movie when that lady got in the pumpkin spot and she went got that thing and went pick that lady car up and then moved it and flipped it. They got some of you in here right now. You'll turn the club up right now. Let somebody jump crazy right now. <laughs> he said, he said, cr he said, cr I ain't about to let you pull me out there, Alan. <laughs> oh, what's under the blood is covered under the blood. <laughs> look, 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 he ain't about to get me in there. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Under the blood, But it's, it's covered under the blood. Everything you've been through, everything you've gone through, is already covered under the blood. Under the blood. All right? It's covered under the blood. I'm coming to a close right here. It's already covered under the blood. Yes, sir. Everything you need has been covered under the blood. Yes. But you got to come in agreement with what God says about you. That's right. So if you want to know what his promises are for you, and you may not know, you might say, well, I can't, I don't know how to go in the Bible and look up all these, all these different things. Well, you can go, go on Google and say, what are all the scriptures that deals with the promises of God? And you'll get an exhausted list of all the scriptures that are the promises of God for you. And you get that word, and you look at that word, and then you just start with one scripture at a time. That word if I hit in my heart that I might not sin against God. And you get that, you get you talk about you wanna know how people learn how to quote scripture? They get that one scripture and they, they get it in their mind and all week long. Why they at work, they're working. They quote that one scripture. Uh -huh. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's his word. And then you keep going. And then my daughter, she didn't she didn't learn, she didn't learn now. When she's at, when she's uh getting ready to face something uh tough at school, she wake up, she said, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. And my daughter she just and I'm, I'm talking about my nine-year-old daughter, Ariana, and she started walking. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. And then there was there was a little girl that told us told us uh, told us something negative, and she didn't like it about her physical presence. And she talked to me about it. And I went found I went found that song, Little Brown Girl. And I played that song, Little Brown Girl. And so now, when it's fall and daughter time, and we're in that car riding together, I put on Little Brown Girl, and we both were sing, we're singing the song together. And she's looking at, looking at herself and everything. My cheeks are beautiful. My hair is beautiful. My clothes is beautiful. And she started encouraging herself. You got to get this word and encourage yourself. Don't depend on somebody else to do it for you. You got to encourage yourself. And when you encourage yourself, That's right. you'll see a change in your life. I'm not out of message, but I am out of time. Somebody just got a pain clap of praise right there. I pray you receive something out of this word today. I do. I pray you receive something out of this word. Brother Brown, can you tell me something you got out of the word today? I like that. I, oh, I like that. Mr. Chantel, can you tell me something you got the word today? Everything you need is covered by the blood of Jesus. Oh, these people listening to the word, mother. They listening to the word. Just Nicole, what you got out the lesson today? Yeah. She said it was for her. She's, she's been with me a long time. A long time. It's so good to see missionary Alicia Williams back there. Oh, oh my God. That woman of God nurtured me from a little boy coming all the way up to be a man. Gave me all kind of opportunities to work and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I, oh man, you blessed me today. Oh, I'm not about to do it. I'm not. I, 
They say, do it for the vine. I ain't gonna do it. Do it for the vine. I ain't gonna do it. Brother Ramon, what you got out of that? Uh, say it's covered under the blood. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that it fell up on good ground, and we thank you for the harvest that shall come from it. Yes. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. amen. Now, while your hands are yet bowed, here's an opportunity for you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to be saved, just lift your hands. You are not saved, and you want to be saved. Come on, come on. You're not saved, and you want to be saved. This is, not, this is not a move to put anybody on the spot. This is not a move to get you out of place. But this is just a, a, a thing that when you close your eyes, you know heaven belongs to you. So if you're not saved and you want to be saved, just lift your hand. Okay? Secondly, you want to walk with God and you're no longer in right standing, but you want to renew your relationship. Just lift your hand. I want to pray for you. Can we thank God for this young man coming? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I didn't realize you were that tall. Do I have another one? Today you want to be saved? You want to renew your life with Christ? Come get my hand today. Is that what? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Ask your neighbor, say, are you saved? Wait for a response. Come on, wait for a response. Wait for a response. Are you saved? Are you saved? Are you saved? All right. So we got that out. We got a saved house, right? Everybody's saved. Okay? Anybody need to recommit their lives? You allow a certain, a certain situation to get you outside of things of God. You've been lacking in your relationship. I just want to get my business right. All right? Repeat these words after me. First of all, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe that he died and rose from rose the grave with all power and pain? That's all it takes for you to be saved. Because when you open up your mouth to confess the Lord and Savior, it's it a done deal just like that. So repeat this prayer after me. I want everybody to repeat this prayer with me. Lord, I thank you for sending your son to die upon the cross for my sins. Thank you, Lord, that he didn't stay there, but he got up with all power in his hands. I thank you that I'm now saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. It was that easy. Now listen, you pray that prayer, you're saved. So everything that you went through in your life, all that has been expunged. You hear me? It's like it don't even exist anymore. You hear me? You got a clean record. Yes. So now from this day on, because you're going to make some mistakes. Okay? You're going to make some mistakes. But you have to understand that even when you make mistakes, God, I ask that you would help me out in this situation. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. And the moment you say forgive me, he forgives you. Your slave goes clean and he gives you another opportunity to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Okay? All right, I'm going to pray for you. What's your name? Father, I thank you right now for James. Bless him right now in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you because you've called him and anointed him from his mother's womb. Father, thank you for the favor that's upon his life. Father, I ask right now that you bless him and cover him in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you right now for the lineage of faith that's in his bloodline. Father, I thank you right now for blessing him right now. I pray ahead to protect him on him right now. And I thank you for comforting him and leading him in every step of his life. And I give the name the praise, the honor, the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, you say, you say, but you need a place to call home. I want to be your pastor. I want to be your pastor. I be your pastor. We got one today. Come on, come on. Bless God. Salvation and coming to the church. Now listen. There are others of you who are not connected to this house. I want to extend my hand to you now. You're here today and you say, I want to be a part of what's going on at the front house. Come grab my hand. Come grab my hand. Come grab my hand. Come grab my hand. Come on! 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 Come on!
and we're going to love them as the new members of our family. In Jesus' name, amen. Can somebody stop? Once service is over, we're going to have Sister Ernie. Sister Ernie will pray. She's going, she's, going to, she's going to receive you right over here in our overflow side. And then she'll take you on over to our fellowship hall. And she'll get some information that women can keep in contact with you. I'm a pastor. I love the text. Just send out a few little words. Encourage her. Like call me. Just let me know I love you. And support. You know, I'm there to support you. When you got things going on, I want to be there to support you. Graduated. Uh, uh, you, got, you got the party going on. I want to celebrate with you. Just this week alone, uh, Minister Andre Brown, uh, he graduated from Luther College. <laughs> I was so blessed to be at the ceremony, but watch this. He even had the opportunity to speak during his graduation. Great things are in store for him. And he's been going with Oscar. My ministry has always been covered with people who work in the medical field. Tell him what God's doing. So God got great things he's going to do for you. I love you all so much. Thank you for becoming a part of our family. Welcome to the Breath Power. I'm so glad to be here. Welcome to the Breath Power. Welcome to the Breath Power. I'm so glad to be here. Welcome to the Breath Power. Sound like I'm speaking a slur <laughs> You go by homie. What do people call me? Homie? Homie? Homie. 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 I really miss my home. Stop, stop. Well, I'm just a down to earth pastor. Yeah. Amen. I love you all so much. Amen. You all can take your seat immediately when service is over. Amen. Sister Ernie will receive you. Amen. Can we thank God one more time? Now, now we we don't have to be long to do this. Okay? We don't have to be long to do this. I want to challenge you in the ministry of giving, even those who are watching online right now. Your seed is what's given to take care of the things of God. I want to challenge you today if this is your day to tithe. We want you to get your tithe together. Amen. If this is not your day to tithe and you want to give a liberal offering, I want you to give as God has given, has blessed you. Now watch this. I'm not going to tell you what to give. You determine how good God has been to you. Okay? Then we have a prayer, what is called God's tip. This should be our doing the entire service. Whenever God has been good to you, and you might you might say, Oh, God has been good to me. I just want to sow a seat. Then you can just come up, get your little seat any time of the service, boom, and that's right there. It's not going to the pastor. I ain't gonna be driving a big body band because of what you put up in there. I gotta say that. I gotta say that. I have a job to do. Yeah, I got a job. He got his own car. He got his own house. So, once you get your seat together, prepare to sow. Hallelujah. Father, cover them like only you can. 
favor them like only you can. Bless them like only you can. Father, I ask you right now that you would cover them and bless them in the name of Jesus. And we'll give your name the praise, the honor, the glory. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen and amen. I love you. I love you. Amen. 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 You have this seat. Come on and bring it. Come on, bring your seats to the Lord. If you saw it, your cash out is dollar sign, front hour, C-O-G-I-C. Dollar sign, front hour, C-O-G-I-C. If you're sewing, you're online, you want to sew, it's dollar sign, Fred Tower, C-O-G-I-C. Amen. I'm so happy you were able to be here with us on today. What's your name? Sabrina Coleman. Sabrina Coleman. You gonna come back and see her? Soon? Huh? That's your mother-in-law. Nobody, mama. <laughs> you say that's your mama? Wow. Man, you better bring your mama back. <laughs> Mrs. Brady, it's so good to have you. Come back and see us. Come back and see us. I'm waving at you. Yes. You've been smiling the whole service. You gonna come back and see me? Huh? It's gonna be soon. All right. 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 Now, let me say this, and Missionary Kim is gonna come with our announcements. Okay. So, as you all know. Pastor has been on this weight loss journey. So I can become a healthier me. You know, because I want to look good, smell good, I want to do some, some different things, you know. I told I told Lady Moore, I said, I want to get, get a case of baby oil and just pour it all on me and just go walk down the beach and everything. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm becoming a healthier me. And God has been working on me. My A1C was at an eight and it dropped down to, I believe it was like a six now. I, I, met, I met with my, uh, my doctors on this week and they told me, they said, after your procedure, you're gonna be coming off all that medication. So I'm telling you, the help you need. Look at my, look at my, look at my clothes. I mean, Lord, I'm you know, so, you know, y'all got big boys passing right now, but. He ain't gonna be big boy no more. Come on, come on. Mother Taylor said, when, when I first, I thank God for our pastor. Be a big man, but I thank God for our pastor. He ain't gonna be a big man for long, mother. And so, I'm having, I just believe in being transparent with my people. April 13th, no secret, my life is an open book. That's why my number is an open book. April 13th. I'll be having the gastric bypass surgery. Okay? I want you all to pray for me. Amen. As I prepare to go through this procedure. God has already been doing it. Alright? And uh, the little girl, she came up here when I just got ready to pray for her. And she was she was offering me a cookie. <laughs> see, that was temptation. But see, my mind is strong. I could have said, girl, give me that cookie. That's a chocolate chip. <laughs> but April 13th is my, is my procedure. Um, uh, Lady Moore, what's your date? February the 10th. Amen. February the 10th is her, is her procedure. Want to be uh, being correct for her. Everything is already well. You know, uh, she put up a testimony on Facebook um, with how uh, the heartbeat uh, was one way, and then when she went and got the got a, another test, uh, things were regulated. I'm just believing God to complete the work. Amen. And so, I love you all. Thank you all so much. Yes, Mother. 